This episode has been brought to you by Audible.com. I'm not going to do the pre-roll read. You already know what they're about. If you like audiobooks, this is the place for you. If you visit audibletrial.com slash lowres, you will get a free audiobook download of your choosing. How cool. How exciting. This is a real novelty. I bet you won't hear that offer on other podcasts. Certainly not. Alternatively, you can go over to lowres.live slash store and buy from my own new audiobook division, Bit Crush Books. How about that? Go ahead and download my 2014 novella, Practice Makes Perfect in audiobook form, as read by Nicholas Joroff, a.k.a. The Wizard of Cause. That's just one of a number of goodies that are currently in stock in the low-res store, including the fast-selling Let's Play Crew Neck, which has been limited to only 40. That's audibletrial.com slash low-res or lowres.live slash store. Now, on with the show. Good morning, good evening, wherever you may be, all my film-centric fans out there. This is Movies, a podcast about the act of cinema. Come on, guys, choose one. Get it together. And this is Jake, better known on the interwebs as the cinematologist. Lorez, Lorez, oh my. He is out tonight. Apparently, on his way back from Asia, he was held up by the Korean Mafia. They told him that he had some services that were due to them for extraditing him back to their country. So he's in a bit of a rut, I suppose. He's got some debts to pay off over in over in the Orient. Or is that not right to call it that anymore? I don't, I don't know. And in this whole array and disarray, if you will. They got a hold of Hans and they actually smashed his hand in like that scene from The Departed, except it's a lot less cringeworthy in real life than it was in that movie. So yeah, Hans has this big, fat, bloated Popeye's forearm of a hand and Lorez is probably naked in a chair somewhere, bound and tied up and being talked to by the guy from The Hangover, Ken Jeong. Right. Anyway, so that leaves me with the task of bringing forth commentary on a movie that I just watched recently, and one that got quite a bit of buzz, and it's an indie movie, so you know I kind of have a chubby in my pants already. So with that said, we're going to talk about the newest Blumhouse release that went straight to Netflix, and that one is called a Cam. Now, if you're a purveyor of the internet, and you've been around as long as I have, even though I haven't even broken 30 years old yet... And if you know the internet culture, the way that people like Lorez, Hans, and myself are kind of familiar with it, you'll find that there are a lot of very nefarious corners of the internet. And one of them are these camera chat rooms. And when I used to go to my town library when I was a little kid, this is all real, I can't make this up. When I used to go to my town library... A very nice library, too. Very well kept up. It was built relatively recent to the stories I'm telling. You'd always have these collection of middle-aged guys. Guys that were somewhere in the ballpark of 42 to 61 years old. And they'd go on the computers, which I believe only had about an hour limit per day when you would go to the library. And they would go to these very peculiar sites. I didn't understand what they were when I was a lad, and this was pre-Facebook and MySpace and pre-anything we really see as a household name today. They would go to these chat rooms, if you will, that were hosted through live video camera feeds of what looked to be underage girls or underage women, I suppose, in this instance, who would model in front of the camera, tease their viewers. And many of them could look back at them through a uh, through a camera, through a web camera. And actually, a few of these guys, I, I would watch over their shoulders because they were so oblivious, trying to get a hard-on in a public library, watching this very delicate little petite girl float around in front of a camera and tease them with compliments and with playful banter and and fluffy pillows and, and the whole nine yards. 
Anyway, the point I'm making is that very creepy older men go to public libraries, and I still think they do, which is the sad part, to watch these, these girls advertise themselves in front of the camera for a nominal fee. So this isn't just some kind of sadomasochistic stuff that we're talking about here. This is a real thing that these young women get paid for and that they seem to have a lucrative market for. And as long as there's creepy, fat, middle-aged men that will fall asleep in the middle of a library and snore up a storm as their hard-on dwindles away and their pants begin to dry back again, with horrified nine-year-old children wondering why this is the case in a public library, there will always be these cam girls to have a source of income. And so with that said, that is the premise of the new indie, I was going to say sensation, but I don't know if it's that yet, but this new indie flick, Cam. And again, this is from Blumhouse, which... Say what you will about Jason Blum, and I'll be the first to criticize him for his lack of general film knowledge, uh, vernacular, aesthetic knowledge, anything. The guy just doesn't know stuff about movies, uh, or he doesn't know enough. The guy executive produces uh, so many so many popular entities, and he can't even dissect them himself when he knows what they're supposed to be about. But he bought the rights to this one, Cam, to distribute it straight to Netflix, and it's gotten a pretty warm reception. I'm struggling getting onto the internet, and as I am on my phone, it has a 93% on Rotten Tomatoes at the moment. Now, I hate that institution, and I'm going to call it that, an institution, or I hate the foundation, whatever you want to call it, that is Rotten Tomatoes, but I do have to say, 93% means that Something interesting is going on here. And there's actually a pretty interesting story behind this particular film. I believe it's a first effort by the team that has made it. The director's name is Daniel Goldhaber. Try saying that a few times fast. That sounds like a Norm MacDonald punchline of a name, but I digress. And the screenplay, again, forgive the pronunciation, is by Issa Maze or Issa Maze. Uh, okay. Anyway, the interesting part about this is the screenplay was written by this Issa Maze woman, or I believe it's a woman, uh, because she is actually a former cam girl. And that's really cool because though the premise of this film maybe isn't the most intriguing to anybody, it really seems like a personal story here and a first-hand account of this person's former life and what kind of insight we've gotten into this world. And I will go off on an aside here and say that the premise, even if you don't think it's intriguing, I actually found myself kind of interested by it from the jump when I was hearing this buzz about it. Because if you think about it, with how dominant the internet culture is today in our world where most people are primarily interacting now through the internet or through some kind of digital communication. It's actually kind of crazy that we've never touched on this kind of territory exactly before. Maybe the closest instance I can think of is part of the VHS series. I think there were a couple bits from that. There was one that was primarily done over Skype, and there might have been another bit that I've forgotten but VHS kind of touched on this, but this is the first kind of narrative film, I think, that really dives in and explores that world. And I gotta say, going back to my anecdote of creepy guys watching these mysterious, nameless girls on the internet that they just throw their money at while they do very perverted things in a public library where kids are watching, it really made me think of what is this world? And maybe I didn't think that directly when I would see these kinds of things or when I would see these kind of chat rooms in my adolescence and whatnot. But there was definitely a subconscious element to that that I really believe was there. And definitely an aspect of curiosity in terms of who navigates this world? Who compromises this world? What, what, is it, what does it entail? 
Because in the digital universe now, the worlds are endless. There's so many different crevices and subcultures in which people can fall into. And the cam world is something that, again, I don't think has been deeply explored. And that's where this film actually, I think, is doing something kind of fresh and new in terms of the whole kind of internet subgenre of films. Now, I think this has kind of been marketing itself as horror, but I think within the first few minutes, you're going to see it's not that. If anything, I would say it's a thriller. And I, yeah, I'll give it that. Um, I do think it does step into a genre in some sense. And overall, to give you a prelude kind of, of what I think of the film, I think... It's a good honest effort, and it's a good first effort on part of this director and this screenwriter who put forth a very personal story, it seems, which, again, is pretty admirable, to really pull back the curtain of this whole underbelly of society, if you will, where this is the highlight of some people's day, and this is a source of income, revenue, and pride for a lot of young women, and, hey, who knows, maybe even young men out there, Though I don't know the market on cam rooms or chat cam rooms with young men. And I don't want to find out anytime soon. But anyway, I digress. So going into this film, I really didn't know what to expect because I was hearing this buzz. But again, I was a little skeptical. And when these movies kind of go straight to Netflix and all I see are some generic positive reviews of it that say oh it's this and oh it's such an inventive new age no did miss me with those buzzwords and everything i want to hear is this an interesting movie is it a good movie and for the most part i do want to say yes for this but it has some issues mostly the ones that put me to sleep a couple times during the movie yes yes i'm reviewing this movie even though i nodded off a couple times but i think that speaks to some of the defects in this movie. But I'm going a little too ahead of myself, so why don't I get back to the plot here? Not that I ever started talking about it. So the plot centers around this cam girl who goes by the screen name of Lola, but her real name is Alice. And so I will say, the opening sequence is actually very engaging. I found myself sunken right into it. And not because of the bouncing pretty actress, who does a great job, by the way, pretending to be this very promiscuous cam girl. No, that, that, that was totally not what reeled me in in the first place. No, it was actually aesthetically very pleasing. I was actually quite interested just based on the visual cues. This draws on a lot of kind of feminine tones and colors in that opening sequence that I think really emphasize that kind of sexual underground society that it is. There's a lot of pinks in there, a lot of hot reds, and a lot of light purples and deep purples that really, again, emphasize that kind of feminine energy and the whole sexual aspect of this chat or of this cam room that sinks you right into this kind of visceral feeling that you're engaging and you're there with uh, Lola and you're there with all of her patrons, so to speak, that are just watching her and paying her to do kind of obscene stuff. Nothing too crazy, but just things that are going to get you know, the 40 to 60 year old creepy library guys a little hot and bothered, if you know what I mean. And so Lola has been going at it for a while, it seems. She's got a very dedicated audience and fan base. And she uses it to climb up this literal ladder of viewership on this site, which I don't think they ever give it a specific name. And that's good because it's just extra information. And she finds that she breaks the top 50 by doing a kind of pervasive stunt, which I'm not giving much away. She pretends to kill herself in the opening sequence. And it's done in an interesting fashion. And again, Sinking into this kind of visual aesthetic, and this is the best part of the movie in my opinion, sinking into it, you just have a very real feeling because I don't think we've been sunken into this kind of environment 
before. And to get into it to the point where she slits her throat in front of the camera and everything, and you see the responses of all the emojis from her followers and her patrons, there's just this kind of natural element to it that I really found interesting. And again, I I was just I gravitated myself to the movie because of this, and I I, I was hooked in right there. But obviously, then you find out that it's a fake, and she's really just trying to excel herself in this world under this fake persona. But on the outside, there's a different story going on, and and this is what sets up a cool dichotomy. For, for the film and to really kind of establish a narrative on part of the screenwriter. And this is probably, again, drawing from their experience in this world. And that's why it's really interesting. You see, when you make a personal movie, or when you make a movie, making it personal makes it honest. And in a lot of cases, that makes it more compelling. So I got to give kudos to the screenwriter here in putting forth a different take and kind of the thriller genre in this world that really hasn't been delved into, but also for setting up the dichotomy that I was just talking about. And that being that Alice and Lola are these two different people. Lola being the bubbly, on-screen, sexualized personality that's beginning to push her creative limits, so to speak, to upheave herself up the social ladder and to achieve more social currency in her world of cam entertainment. But then you have Alice, who is a pretty normal young woman, and she is just trying to seek acceptance, and she's actually a bit reluctant about her situation. She hasn't figured out how to tell her mother about how she's been making money, though her friends know, and I believe her brother knows. And it definitely sets up this dramatic conflict, and it would almost be good if this was the central conflict of the film because this is one that could go in a multitude of directions. She doesn't have a very accepting mother. It looks like there's an absentee dad problem there, which would explain, again, why she's a cam girl. But the psychoanalysis aside, this is a compelling conflict because I think we've all been in a scenario at one time or another where we could really just not get through to our parents or our parental figures based on the household we grew up in, based on what kind of decisions we were making at the time and this kind of fork in the road that we might have been at at one of a point in our life. So I think that sets up this really compelling and relatable dichotomy in one way, not that many of us know what it's like to be a cam girl, but it makes it a very human story and it makes it very grounded in a theme that we can understand. And again, this is where the most effective parts of the movie, in my opinion, take place. Because then the plot takes a little bit more of a bizarre turn. And again, I think it goes in a direction that's not necessarily the best. But again, on part of this writer, I think it's an honest kind of story. So let me just unravel it a little bit. Basically, there seems to be a duplicate of Lola climbing up the social ladder of this campsite. It looks just like her, pretends to be her, uses her username, and is essentially stealing her identity. And now this kind of brings in a whole new challenge for Lola, who's wondering who's imitating her, who's trying to steal her livelihood, and who's trying to take away everything she's done to build that persona herself and that online prominence herself and all that currency herself. Who is this nefarious entity that is coming into the picture and just stealing this version of herself that she's created separate from the real world? And that's really cool because I think that touches on the themes of what's really going on in the world, in social media especially. This this is for many of us too. Many of us have this different kind of persona online than we have in the real world. I'd say look at half the people, how they market themselves on Instagram, even normies that aren't in the creative field, how they try to market themselves or what kind of pictures they post of themselves. I think it's a real thing. It's a real phenomenon that just examining it and again to psychoanalyze, it's just really cool to kind of pull the curtain back on that and see that people are so conscientious about it and 
in this instance, you can at least feel for the main character, Lola, or Alice, because the Lola character that she's come up with and has lived by is a source of her livelihood, and it's who she is in a sense, but it's being taken away from her. And then she's also seeing repercussions in the outside world as loyal patrons begin to interact with her in the outside world. And that sets up that sets up a good dramatic kind of conflict that I think would have been better explored if they went a little further with it. But nothing too crazy happens. But again, we have seen some pretty good stalker movies over the years. And if they did go down that route, that might be a little too conventional. So while my kind of review on this is a little fresh, I can definitely get why they went in this more bizarre kind of direction. And I think what it results in is a mostly pretty good movie that does tap into these themes of online activity and this kind of alternate reality that we set up in the internet world and how this alternate version of ourself of ourself can even consume our real self in a sense and i think that's kind of what the movie gets at it might not spell it out and that's the way i like it and it leaves it out there for interpretation i i do have to say though on a critical note the movie did lose me a couple times i yes i i actually fell asleep and i think that happens toward the end of the first act bridging into the second act there seems to just be a slowdown in the pace and in the visuals and the the visual appeal kind of dwindles away and gets more conventional and for me I, I don't have ADHD or anything but because it was so engaging in that opening sequence in in all the cam sequences I think if they really stressed that a little bit more though I understand they were trying to create two different worlds kind of the real world a little bit more mundane looking and average looking and then the internet world, a lot more experimental, and that's great and all. But I think there was an issue that kind of aligned with that, where the visual appeal went. I think the pacing was a little droolish. Even though this wasn't a long movie, I think it was an hour and 25 minutes, an hour and 30 minutes. I could have just been tired, too. But, again, I do think this is actually a pretty strong first effort from the director and the writer. And overall, this being a small indie film, I believe, and yeah, with Blumhouse picking it up, that would almost make it certain that this is definitely an indie-backed project. You can feel the honesty with this movie. And you can feel that this is something that was made by people that really wanted to say something a little bit different. And I'm not giving this movie any kind of glowing praise. I, I just, I thought it was good. Um, the lead actress... I should mention that before I get out of here, was actually pretty impressive. Her name is Madeline Brewer, and I believe she has some experience, but though not that much. She got her first role, I believe, in Orange is the New Black, which is a downright terrible show. So I congratulate her for kind of getting into something a little bit more respectable and entertaining and tonally consistent than that terribly overrated show. And the rest of the cast is, I think, serviceable. Nobody really stands out all that much. But Madeline Brewer really humanizes this character. And I think that's uh, an important aspect for us to remember. Because, again, kind of like the creepy guys that are hanging out at the libraries, they might not see these women or these girls as humans. They just kind of see them as sex objects. And I think a lot of us kind of see it that way, too. Because... You see some girl stripping on camera or doing strip teases for money. Well, you think, oh, well, she's just some chick trying to get money, trying to show off her body for dough, and that's kind of it. You, you don't think of what these people might deal with on the outside world. And because the movie implicates that this cam world, that kind of is their world. The outside world is more conflicted. It's more uncertain. There, there's no certainty as to how these people People, even your family or friends, are going to react to the alternate per persona you've set up in real life. And I think that's a pretty compelling message, in a sense. Now, I do got to say, for the thriller aspect, no edge-of-your-seat stuff here. 
Uh, no real nail-biting stuff. A uh, pseudo-mystery that's not really definitively answered and doesn't have any kind of full-on payoff. There just seems to be a conflict there and a mystery that's maybe a little eerie, but not totally explored or you're not going to get the answer that you want necessarily. So I guess I'm going to end it there. But overall, I'm going to say if you're interested in this movie, if you check out the trailer or whatnot, or if you just hear this review and you're interested in it, Go to Netflix and I'd say check it out. It might be something you enjoy. I think the visuals, definitely, especially in the opening sequence and pretty much all the cam scenes, those will hook you in. Um, I think they, they're effective. And that's really what I'm asking for in a lot of movies primarily. You got to look good first. and It, it shot well and I, I just think it presents itself in a kind of bizarre underground neon hue that was again really engaging gave the film its own identity and this may not be remembered as some kind of all-time great but down the road I could see this one achieving some kind of cult status it's not like it's going to make a buttload of money I could hardly see there being a sequel but I think Blumhouse made another good investment here and Jason Blum I, I just feel like maybe maybe the guy's the luckiest guy in the world that he's just investing in certain quality products because, again, the guy seems to know nothing about film or filmmaking. But, hey, I got to give it to him. He's savvy and he makes good decisions, it looks like. So this one, again, I think it can be enjoyed. I think there is enough to enjoy about it. The act, uh, the main actress is terrific. I think she does a great job. I think the direction is pretty slick. The screenplay is interesting. It opens up a whole new world and it feels very compelling and it feels very honest. So I think what you've got here is a movie that's going to be more subjective, but again, I'd recommend it. Give it a shot. Might not be your cup of tea. Don't get mad at me if it isn't. Okay. There's plenty of worse movies out there. And if you don't believe me, fine, go on Netflix, look at any of the trending ones. They all kind of suck. But anyway, I'm going to cut it off there because I'm getting word that the Korean Mafia is going to let up low-res, and they're going to cut him loose, but they're not paying for Hans's medical bills for that hand injury. So, that's somber, so I'm going to have to figure out how to manage this whole ordeal. But in the meantime, guys, uh, I want to say thank you for listening. If you want to listen to more of me, why not check me out at The Cinematologist on YouTube, that's Cinema, T-O-L-O-G-I-S-T, as well as on Facebook and Twitter at The Tologist, T-H-E-T-O-L-O-G-I-S-T. And if you don't want to listen to me anymore, uh, well, hey, I admire you stomaching me for the last 26, 27 minutes. So I got to give you kudos where it's due. And you're a real trooper. I mean, you're, you're the heroes of this world. Why would you listen to me all this time if you couldn't stand me? But for those of you that did enjoy it, I hope to be back sometime soon under less dire circumstances. And until then, be sure to watch good movies and to report any creepy men at your local libraries. Good night, everybody.